mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet you, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen attentively to the word of God. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her, Thank you, Father. indeed she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up unto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flocks. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them, carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you to be, conducting yourself in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, he will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins people of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. We will soon break ground on a church bell tower, if we can ever get the building permit. One of the first acts of constructing a bell tower will be to drive pilings into the ground to make sure of the long-term stability of the tower with hurricanes and everything else we face here in South Louisiana. We who live below sea level in New Orleans know that solid foundations are essential to construct buildings on shifting, sinking soil. Often we need to add landfill, which is dirt or sand, and let that fill settle into a plot of land for a good long time before we begin building on the property. 
In addition, we almost always have to put pilings under a building before beginning construction to prevent the slab from cracking and the building from subsiding. All this foundation work, of course, takes lots of time and money, but it is essential to spend the time and money for a good foundation and not risk the needless collapse or ruin of the building. Today's Advent readings continue last week's theme of preparation, the theme of Advent. The theme of preparing for the coming of Jesus at Christmas, past, future, and present. This week's readings use soil preparation as our image for Advent preparation. In the first reading, Isaiah writes, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight a highway for our God. Let every valley be filled in and every mountain and hill be made low. But let the rugged land be leveled into a plain and then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. These words have been uh, lifted by uh, George Handel to become words of one of the great arias in Handel's Messiah. Every valley shall be exalted. I started to sing it for you, but I didn't want to ruin it forever. The terrain of Israel is a hodgepodge of geological features. There is flat desert and flat fertile plains deep gorges and deep canyons, high hills, and very rocky roads. A king or ruler in Israel couldn't visit his people without a lot of advanced road work being done so that his carriage and his entourage of camels and attendants could traverse the landscape safely and comfortably. So too, by analogy, Jesus needs a straight pathway to travel into the depths of our hearts. Soil preparation becomes a symbol for the spiritual preparation that we need to be undergoing. We all have mountains, mountains of pride, anger, envy, lust, greed, and sloth, mountains that need to be leveled. We also have valleys of apathy, indifference, spiritual disinterest that need to be filled in. Advent is this prime season for preparing that pathway for Jesus to come into our hearts. We need pilings, just like our bell tower needs pilings. Pilings of prayer and worship and reconciliation for our sins and penance and works of charity to firm up the spiritual foundation and allow Jesus to be more fully alive in our hearts. Today's gospel reminds us of how much preparatory work God the Father did before he sent his son into the world. There were thousands of years between the sin of Adam and Eve and the coming of Jesus. And during that time, God sent prophet after prophet to give words of comfort and challenge to his people and to call Israel from sin to God. The last of the prophets whom God sent before he sent his son uh, into public ministry was the cousin of Jesus, John the Baptist. The last and many say greatest of the prophets. He's the one of whom Mark's gospel refers to when it says, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare the way for you. As we heard in today's gospel, John suddenly appeared in the desert. He was about six months uh, older than Jesus. And one day he appeared in the desert and began to proclaim, Repent and return to God. And he started pouring water over people in the Jordan River as a sign of their desire to be right with God. John called people to a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of their sins because he knew the arrival of Jesus was right around the corner. And as we heard in the gospel, people flocked from all over Judea and Jerusalem out into the desert 
to hear this man John preach and to hear and to receive baptism for their sins at his hands. And John had a strange lifestyle. He lived in the desert where actually hardly anyone lived. He wore rough camel's hair clothing instead of softer cotton clothing. And his diet consisted of locusts and wild honey. Or for those of you who watch The Chosen, Simon Peter says he eats bugs. And he doesn't say it in a flattering way. John's strange demeanor got people's attention. They left the cities and villages and towns to go into the desert and to see this odd man. And they were captivated by his preaching and impressed by his lifestyle because his lifestyle revealed a total disdain and disinterest in worldly things and a single-hearted focus on God and on the coming Messiah. John pointed everyone to Jesus and not to himself and said, there's one mightier than I who's coming after me. He will baptize, I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to give us power to live as children of God. So John did exactly what the people needed in order to prepare for Jesus. Advent is about us doing a kind of soil preparation of our spirit, which is why we do a number of things in Advent that we only other do probably in Lent. Last week, we distributed Advent reflection booklets so that you would have spiritual reflection materials to look at every day for the season. We gave out Advent calendars to children to help them count down the days to Christmas to focus on Jesus and not Santa. It's why we had an Advent evening of reflection this past Wednesday with several people giving testimonials of how God broke into their lives and brought Advent into their spiritual journey. It's why we've had Advent confessions during some evenings of the past week and why we have other confession times scheduled in the coming week. It's why Father Andrew and I have seen a bump in the number of people attending weekday Mass. As I mentioned this week, when I came into Mass, the 6.30 a.m. Mass on Monday and saw all the people, I asked, is something going on here today that I don't know about? It was people making that extra effort in order to prepare that pathway for Jesus. We see more people praying in the chapel as I opened the chapel at 7 a.m. on Monday mornings, and this yesterday, Friday morning, it's like there was a, a packed house ready to come in and pray in our chapel. It's why our parishioners took over 400 angels from our giving tree and brought gifts and toys and are buying holiday meals for the needy. It's actually why some people are going to attend our Advent concerts all to enlarge their hearts and prepare them spiritually for a deeper indwelling of Jesus. It's why people are walking around, some people saying, who are the neglected, the needy, and the lonely in the world, especially at Christmas? Who's the one who needs that phone call from me, that Christmas card, the visit, the meal, the gift, the sign of God's love. We have a lot of people who are very serious about their soil preparation this Advent so that their souls are solidly set and don't collapse under the crush of worldly events and trials and distractions and trivia and temptations. At our Christmas market last weekend, one of the vendors was selling beautiful embroidered Christmas towels. And the one that caught my attention had the silhouette of a nativity and a manger with a cute little baby smiling who was representing Jesus. And the words on the Christmas towel, best day ever. Now maybe somebody would dispute that and say Easter was the best day ever probably a tie between Christmas and Easter. 
regardless of what we think, we are preparing to celebrate these stupendous, mind-boggling event of the God who created us coming to be one among us. How can we possibly wrap our minds around that? The church gives us the season of Advent to try to do that a little better. So let's ask God to flatten our mountains of sin and our mountains of addiction and all of the things that have become our little mini-gods. Let's ask God for the grace to fill up the valleys where apathy and indifference have settled in. Let's ask God to drive spiritual pilings of prayer and reconciliation and penance and good works this Advent so that we, who are temples of God's Holy Spirit, can withstand all the assaults and the storms that life throws at us. God, we still have over two weeks to go in Advent. Grant us a transformative, pile-driving Advent. Amen. Please stand and together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The light of the world is above. Amen. Trusting in God's great love for us, we bring our prayers and needs to God, our Heavenly Father. That the season of Advent, this special time of preparation for the coming of Christ, may fill us with greater faith, hope, joy, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a peaceful resolution of a conflict in the Middle East and for protection of civilian pop populations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis' prayer intention for the month of December, that people living with disabilities may be at the center of attention in society and that institutions may offer inclusive programs which value their active participation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of China, Cuba, Iraq, Afghanistan, Nicaragua, and Ukraine, as they struggle in the face of persecution and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of all who are sick and suffering physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to priesthood and religious life, especially here from our parish, and for the strengthening of marriages, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now pause to add our own intentions in silence.
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join in saying our family prayer in the inside front cover of the Gather Hymnal. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our society have appreciated the awareness of love our lady of Pop Sahor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, to bury our mother and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus which gives respect to the life and the dignity of all people. Bless, Bless parents, parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless, Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask for this in Christ our Lord, from the Lady of Pumsahor, be safe to help us. Mother Henry, let us heal. Pray for us that we may be a holy family. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, please hear the prayers we have offered, which we make in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as the ushers take up the collection for the expenses and ministries of our church and as our servers prepare the altar for the sacred sacrifice.
Great sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come we pray to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago. He opened for us the way to eternal salvation, so that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Son, Jesus Christ. 
Rule him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And please be seated for several announcements. Uh, every three months, we have the sacramental anointing of the sick for those who are seriously ill or weakened by age. So we'll have that after this Mass and after the 8 a.m. Mass tomorrow morning. That's after the, our closing hymn, Father Andrew and I will take about two minutes to get set up and he will join me and we'll do the anointing in the center aisle for anyone who would like to start. Uh, tomorrow is the Handel's Messiah concert at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I happen to be here on Thursday when they were rehearsing, and there's a beautiful harpsichord that was sitting in the middle aisle with all of these orchestral uh, instruments and the four soloists here. It, and it's just amazing. So that's 3 o'clock tomorrow. We invite you to come. You can buy a ticket online at symphony at symphonychoruswebsite.org or at the door. Next Sunday is our parish and school Christmas concert at 3 p.m. in church. It is free, and uh, we hope you will join us. Uh, this Wednesday morning is the last meeting for That Man Is You for Men of the 2023 year, and the final meeting for women's, the Women's Bible Study Walking with Purpose is the Young Women's Meeting. It's this Thursday evening. Next weekend, we invite you to bring the Baby Jesus statue from your family nativity to church at any mass to be blessed. We'll have, uh, after the blessing, we'll have gift wrap paper in the back of church. If you would like to wrap up the Jesus, put him under your tree and make him the first present you all uh, open on Christmas morning. We've done this for the last two years with a lot of uh, faith. Please help us decorate the interior of the church for Christmas next Sunday evening right after the 6 p.m. Mass. We need as many people as possible because, as you probably remember, we have about 20 block trees and about 200 poinsettia plants, and uh, it's a big production. Uh, we will reward all volunteers with refreshments, so please lend a hand next Sunday evening. The Knights of Columbus are selling hand-painted nativity cutout signs regards after masses in the back of church. Their table is back here. Consider getting one of these beautiful signs that really remind us of the reason for the season and help support the work, the charity work of the Knights. If you were one of the 160 people who ordered a garden flag for our 100th anniversary, the flags are in and they are available for pickup at the back of church. We have a list of everyone who ordered and paid for the sign, so we'll ask you to sign your name and initial it, and then you can pick up your flag. It's also with the Knights of Columbus. And finally, if you'd like to get a ticket for our 2024 Lenten mission with Chris Stefanik, you can also do that with the Knights of Columbus. We're giving them quite a workout this week. Reserve a poinsettia plant, one of the plants that we'll have for a loved one of yours, living or deceased, uh, for just a $10 donation. There's an envelope in the pew, or you can bring the money to the church office. Your loved one's name will be placed on our memorial board, and we will pray for them at all the masses during the Christmas season. And finally, please see the flyers on the doors of church or in the bulletin for our complete Christmas mass schedule. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the world of souls. Amen. And again, the sacramental anointing right after the closing again. Have a great weekend and a wonderful week to come. Thank you.